Book of Matthew, chapter 17. I was hoping for one more song because I was looking at something on one of the other side of the pages here and I thought, man, that's pretty good right there. One more song. We might have had something totally different tonight. So whoever quenched and grieved God, yeah, it's your fault for what we get, all right? Matthew chapter number 17. We'll begin our reading in verse number 14. The Bible says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of, them, out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you, howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Let's pray. Our Father, we certainly want to bless your name. Thank you, Lord, that we was able to have service tonight, that the weather didn't get bad. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing we've enjoyed, the good testimonies, fellowship with thy people. Thank you, Lord, for being a darling Savior that's easy to love and easy to worship. Lord, we thank you for the privilege and the freedom we have this very evening to come and pay our tribute and our honor to thee. Now, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, uh, bless now your people, you would speak to our hearts, you would enlighten our minds and our, and our hearts, and you'd do something for us from the word of God. Lord, help us to hide thy word in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Bless those that are working with the children and those working with the teens, and God, I pray that uh, uh, those children would hide the word of God in their heart when they reach the age of accountability. They'd come to the saving knowledge of Christ at a young age. Uh, and I pray for those teenagers, Lord. They're faced with uh, much pressure, Lord, and a lot of things in this life. And God, I pray you'd help them. Lord, you'd protect their precious minds. And God, you'd give them some sustenance for their soul that they can draw from an entire week long, Lord, and, and uh, certainly be used of thee. Now, Father, bless as only you can. Help us, and we'll certainly thank you for it. Use this unworthy vessel to thy glory, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice a few things in these verses as a way of introduction. First of all, I want you to notice the requirement. Look again at verse 15. The Bible says that this man came to Jesus. He, he was, uh, uh, fell down kneeling before the Lord. He says, Lord, have mercy on my son, uh, for he's a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft uh, into the water. We have a, a tremendous need. Uh, there's a crisis in this family. Uh, Here's a, a man whose son uh, uh, is in terrible shape uh, who oftentimes uh, falls into fire and into water and he's overtaken by a uh, possession of a demon and uh, uh, he calls him a lunatic. He's sore vexed. He says, there's nothing I can do with this boy. Uh, and he said, Lord, uh, would you have mercy on him? Aren't you glad the Lord's merciful? Uh, aren't you glad there's no case too difficult for him? Uh, aren't you glad uh, uh, he knows exactly what to do and how to do it. Uh, and we see the requirement of this text. Now notice the reprimand of verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Amen. In his day, all the miracles he'd done and all that he had taught his disciples, certainly they would have been able to glean from it and be able to take hold to it and use it for the glory of God. And he calls them a faithless and perverse generation. I wonder what he calls our generation. Hmm? He says, how long shall I be with you? Hmm? How long shall I suffer you? Can I say there comes a point when God expects his people to be able to do some things for themselves. Amen. Amen. 
Too many of God's youngins are want to be like baby birds just staying in the nest and expect God to come and feed them, God to pay their bills, God to, and they don't realize God requires some things from them. And he says, how long shall I suffer you? In other words, how long should I tolerate this from you? Hmm? We see the reprimand. Now notice the rebuke in verse number 18. And Jesus rebuked the devil. And he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Let me just say this real, real plain. Jesus is the only one who can rebuke the devil. Amen. You watch some of these TV charismatics and these TV preachers that get on there and say, I'm rebuking the devil. You better be very careful. The Bible says that even Michael the archangel durst not accusation against the devil. You and I do not have the authority nor the power to rebuke the devil. Uh, and when uh, you see this crowd uh, 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 saying they rebuke the devil, that what they're doing, they're praying to the devil. I hear them a lot of times calling by name and uh, throw charges at him. You're inviting demon activity in your life when you do that, friend. You're nuts if you do that. Uh, you're not equipped for it. Only Jesus can rebuke the devil. Right. Huh? And we see that. Uh, but then notice the relevancy of this whole text. Look at verse 16. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. They brought him to the disciples, and the disciples could not cure him. Now notice some things in this verse. First of all, the disciples were present. They were there. Now, it's real easy to throw off on folks that claim to be saved and doesn't show up. But they did show up. Matter of fact, they were faithful. They were in their place. They were present. Notice, they were participating. These weren't folks that just showed up fought for the back row like Brother James back there, and uh, then never does anything in a service. Never says amen, never takes part. No, these, this, this crowd was participating. They were involved. Uh, they were involved in the ministry. Uh, this is a crowd that teaches a class and uh, uh, is the treasury and uh, does all the work around the house of God. Uh, uh, this is a participating crowd. This is a present crowd. Uh, uh, we're not talking about that crowd that's not faithful tonight. We're talking about the very faithful. They were present. They were participating. And they were powerless. He said they could not cure him. Hmm? Matter of fact, the disciples go on to ask Jesus privately, how come we couldn't do that? They were powerless. This morning I preached on the powerless tomb. With the Lord's help tonight, I want to preach on powerless disciples. Again, I'm talking about Folks that are faithful, folks that are present, folks that participate, folks that are involved, uh, they don't have any power. I'm not talking, Brother Josh, that crowd don't have power to come to church. I'm talking about folks that don't have the power of God in their life to make a difference in the life of somebody else. Again, present. They participate. But where's the power? I remind you that John said that there cometh one after him whose shoes he wasn't worthy to latch it. He says, he, he says I have baptized you with water. He said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Where's the fire? He said, oh, I'm saved. Yeah, where's the fire? Hmm? How come the Baptist theme song is... Uh, I shall not be moved. And the Baptist theme song is uh, when the saints come dragging in. Huh? How come that's a... Where's the fire? Where's the power? And powerless disciples. And in these verses, I find out why disciples are powerless. And I say, first of all, about powerless disciples. They make a public appearance without a private interference. They make a public appearance without a private interference. Interference. I said, what are you talking about? Uh, look with me in verse number 21. He says, Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Jesus said, You couldn't cast the demon out of this boy because this only happens through prayer and fasting. The reason that there are powerless disciples... Uh, They'll make a public appearance. They'll show up, uh, 
they'll come, they'll open the songbook, they'll sing the songs, uh, 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 they'll uh, uh, even uh, uh, attempt to testify, they'll attempt to do things in the service, uh, but the reason there's no power uh, as friends, uh, there's no private interference uh, where God interferes in their life. Uh, there's no private closet prayer. Uh, there's no fasting and spending time agonizing with God uh, to see God move. Uh, you've heard it preached from me and every preacher that's ever come through here. Uh, the power comes through prayer. Uh, but how come we don't pray? Uh, how come we don't fast? Uh, even in times gone by when I've called a fast here in the church, uh, many don't participate. They don't see the importance of it. Uh, hey, look around. Uh, there's no fire. Uh, there's no power. Uh, how much more do you have to see? Uh, hey, uh, the public appearance doesn't get it done without private interference from God. Uh, there's powerless disciples because we don't spend time with God. We don't pray and seek His face. We don't fast. We don't meditate on Him. We don't spend time with Him. We blow into church and blow out and wonder why nothing happens. Hmm? Oh, we're present. We're participating. We're baby birds in the nest. Here I am, God bless me. At least I showed up on a rainy night. Where's the power? How many times do I have to preach that you got to do business with God before you get here for God to be here when you show up? And yet... We don't. There's powerless disciples because of that public appearance without a private interference. But not only that, disciples are powerless because they practice what is not personally proven. Can I say years ago, I was a young preacher. I thought I knew everything you needed to know. And I had no problem preaching on faith. And about eight years later, God caused me to learn about faith. Amen. It's easy to preach on faith when all your bills are paid and you've got a big paying job and you can do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. And it's another thing when all that's gone and you've got to live it anyway. Hmm? Uh-uh. Boy, when all the prayers are answered and God's been good, it's easy to serve God. Mountaintops are wonderful. But faith is increased in the valley, friends. Can I say, practice what is not personally proven. There's a lot of people that will tell you how to raise your children that don't have children. And even if they have children, they don't have your children. I got three in my household and they're all three different. Hmm? Hmm? I got a dog. Don't tell me how to raise a dog. I got one. He's got a mind of his own. Huh? But people are all the time quick to give advice. And people will tell you what it takes to bring revival. How do they know? They've never seen it. Hmm? And people will come to church and they'll shout amen and they'll sing, but they've not put into practice what it takes to have power. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? Hmm? Look at verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. We got a lot of hypocrites coming to the house of God. See, we will judge people for not coming, but we come and we're powerless because we haven't proven the Word of God in our own lives. Hmm. It's easy to judge somebody without walking in their shoes. Well, how about you? How come you don't have the power of God on you tonight? I should have never got to preach. He got up and sang that little chorus. Isn't Jesus wonderful? We should have kicked those walls down. Right. Now, how come we didn't? Because we're all wrapped up in a lot of other things. Let me ask you this. Anybody got problems? Why? 
He said, if you got faith the size of a seed of a grain of mustard seed, you can say to a mountain, be thou removed, and be cast in the sea. How come you got them, them problems in mountains? Because you don't have faith. You know why you got problems? Because you don't have faith. When you got faith, it don't matter what size the mountain. Because you don't have problems anymore. You control your problems through your faith. Hmm? A lot of us, we dwell so much on so much junk, it robs us of our faith. And we don't prove faith. We don't get rid of mountains through faith. And we'll come to the house of God, we don't have any power. We allow all kinds of things to sidetrack us, to get us off course, to destroy our faith. We allow little pebbles of life to overthrow us. It amazes me how little it takes for people to get out of the house of God. It amazes me how little it takes for somebody to get sidetracked. I've seen time and time and time again people come, sit on the front row, make promises. Oh, I'm going to serve God. Two weeks, bloodhound can't find them. Oh, I've made up my mind. This is what I'm going to do. Well, it's easy to talk the talk. But unless you prove the Word of God in your own life, you're not going to make it. You're not going to have any power. Huh? The Word of God, it might as well just be a dictionary sitting on a shelf if you don't open it up and apply the truths to your life and prove them for yourself. Do you remember when David uh, was being hunted by Saul and he had to leave in the middle of the night and he gets down there uh, 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 into the middle of the night and he goes by Ai and he goes to the high priest and he's get, eating showbread uh, that was a day old that he really had no right to and he asked the priest, he said, hey, do you have any weapons? He said, I have none save the sword of Goliath. Uh, it's behind the ephod. Uh, David had forgotten, uh, Brother Brian, about that great victory with Goliath. Uh, he'd forgotten years earlier uh, how God had used him uh, uh, to throw that stone and God guided it to the only place Goliath didn't have armor. Uh, and David took Goliath's own sword and he chopped off uh, uh, Goliath's head uh, and God wrought a great victory. Uh, and in the days and years to come by, David had tens of thousands of occurrences of victory. Uh, but but now there is no victory. Uh, now he's running for his life. Uh, Brother David, he'd lost sight and he forgot about that sword. Uh, but there it is. Uh, and that sword represented what was proven. Uh, and David didn't say, give it to me. Uh, he said, give it me. Uh, in other words, he gave himself to what was proven. Uh, and God uh, sustained David. Uh, and God fulfilled his promise. And David became king uh, because... He yielded to what was proven. Until we start letting the Word of God prove itself in our life, we'll never have the power of God. We'll be powerless disciples. I can preach, Brother Larry can preach, Brother Bell can preach, Brother Steve can preach, Brother Josh can preach, Brother Jordan can preach, Brother Raymond Jr. can preach, Brother Christian can preach. Uh, we can have Brother Mike come, Brother Greg come, Brother Luther come. Uh, we can have every preacher in the country come. Uh, and it doesn't do any good unless we start proving it out in our life. And applying those truths. We'll just be an empty shell. Powerless. And when real need arises, we won't have what it takes. And the Lord will say, oh, faithless and perverse, uh, uh, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I dwell with you? How long shall I suffer you? How long will He let the candlestick burn before He says, that's enough? And He snuffs it out and takes it somewhere where somebody does want to do something with it. Amen. Hmm? They were powerless because their practice was not with what was personally proven. It's easy for me to stand up and say something. It's another thing for me to prove it in my life. You know, we used to have people used to contend with some of the things I'd preach. And I'd always lay forth the charge. If anybody wants to rebuke me from the Word of God, I'll gladly stand up and recant it and apologize. Never once. Brother Ray, did anybody ever come to me with the Bible and say, this is what you said and it's wrong? You say, why? Because I try to prove what I'm going to preach. Huh? 
I've been down the pages of this thing. I was, I was in my Bible uh, last night, even today. I'm thinking, I'm gonna, as much as I hate it, I'm going to have to start using one of my other ones. This one's getting so frail, but it's been such a friend. Uh, 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 we've had such a wonderful relationship. Uh, hey, but listen, why are the pages tattered? Why are they worn? Because uh, I've proven them, my dear friends. Uh, and it'll work. Christians are powerless because they haven't proven the precious promises of God. They haven't proven that faith works. Can I say, disciples are powerless because their passion is prideful and not upward. People do things to get noticed, get a pat on the pack, to be esteemed of men. Your passion shouldn't be that others recognize what you're doing for Jesus. Uh, your passion ought to be uh, that Jesus is glorified and that's why you do what you do. Yeah. Amen. Good. Well, I wasn't going to say this, but I'm just going to say it. It's on my mind, it's in my heart. Miss Annette and I was talking this week. You would absolutely be dumbfounded of how few people truly show me respect as pastor here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. And I told her, I named some. I said, these are the ones that show me respect. I said, many just take me for granted. That's sad. That's sad. Hmm. Listen, I don't do what I do to get respect or pat on the back. I do what I do because of what Jesus has done in my heart. I don't expect other people to do what I do. Uh -uh. I knew I wouldn't be laid up with shoulder surgery and miss a lot of time. I just knew that. Because I know me. But listen. There are so many people that if you don't constantly come by and stroke them. Yeah. Oh, Clinty. So good to see you, baby. Huh? That's what I do to my puppy. Mm -hmm. huh? But if you don't treat them that way, they're not going to serve God. Because their passion isn't, I love Jesus. He's my Savior. I love Jesus. He's my Lord. Their passion is, I want to be noticed. I want some recognition. Oh, I hope Brother Doug calls my name tonight. Oh, I hope Brother Doug refers to me tonight. Oh, I hope Brother Doug lets me sing tonight. Oh, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. And the problem is, it's all about you. That's why you have no power. Mm. You'd be amazed at some of the most little insignificant things that people want to be recognized for. I know people that have major health events going on in their life and you never hear a thing about it. And then there are people that get a hangnail. I mean, it's smaller than a hangnail. I mean, you've got to get a nuclear microscope to see anything. And they want the whole world to know about it. They want the prayer chain called. You know, I've got to go to the doctor in four weeks. Can you call the prayer chain? The prayer chain's for emergencies. Huh? No, I'm not calling the prayer chain. Huh? Why? Because it's about them. And there are people who work and do things in the shadows and do things behind the scene and give of themselves and give of their substance and give of their monies and give of their time and they never want to be recognized for it. And there are others that do the least little slut and they want the whole world to know. You know what they're, they're telling on themselves? Their passion is themselves. It's not Jesus. Give me that crowd. It doesn't care that anybody knows that they're doing anything. Because they're doing it because they love Jesus. Give me that crowd that's up 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning seeking God's face and praying and nobody knows about it. Instead of that crowd that beats on their chest on the street corner. Lord, I'm glad I'm not like that person over there. Are you listening? Disciples are powerless because their perception is physical and not spiritual. They have no discernment. I don't mean to throw off on people. We've had people in here request prayer for their dogs. We have. 
Fifi and Fido don't have souls. Jesus didn't die for them. And they'll be okay. Huh? We've had them. We've had people bring up some of the most ignorant things. It's because their perception is physical, not spiritual. Listen. There is no manual. Well, I haven't found it. Have you found it? I've been looking. A manual on discernment. There's no manual. There's no manual. See, Brother David, there's a good pride and a bad pride. A good pride is to kind of get you out of bed and makes you brush your hair and brush your teeth and put deodorant on so you don't stink. That's a good pride, okay? But the bad pride is where you get around saying, well, I am somebody I have arrived. Uh, God is blessed to have me. That's the bad pride. That's the kind of pride God hates. Amen. But there are some people, they're so full of pride, they can't understand. When you get to thinking you're spiritual, guess what? You're not. That's the bad kind of pride. But discernment is being able to hear that still, small voice. Some of you can't hear my voice, let alone that still, small one. Yep. I've had people say, Preacher, how do you know? This is the only way I can describe it. I just know. Because when that still, small voice speaks, you don't hear it here. You hear it here. And you know. And I don't know much, but I know when he speaks. And I know when he doesn't speak. And the problem with powerless disciples is they can't discern the difference. Listen, there's not many services that go by that I don't say, does anybody want to brag on the Lord? Well, if you're saved, you have some reason to rejoice in something. But it's not always in order of God for you to speak every service. It's not an open invitation. It's, is God stirring anything in your heart? Has He spoke to your heart because He wants to use you to bless everybody else? Amen. Do you ever notice there are some people, they don't even have to say much. You hardly ever hear anything at them. But boy, when they say something, you better pay attention because God's all over it. And there are some people, they go to say things and you can't even understand because the big tears are running down their face. But God's on it and you know what they're meaning because God's in it. And there are other people... They'll testify and testify and testify and God's not within a million miles of it. They're powerless because they have no perception or perceptions all based on physical and not spiritual. Hmm. Now I don't say that to scare people never to say anything. Just if you're going to say it, make sure it's God telling you to say it. If you're going to sing a song, make sure God's birthed it in your heart to sing the song. We got a bunch of talent. Hey, it's not when I say anybody got a song, doesn't mean everybody in this church sing. Huh? We got a lot of preachers. I, I just, hey, anybody got a message? We all get up and preach. Uh, we'd be here forever. That's not always ordained of God. Now, if God got in it and we all preached and we all sang and we was here for three weeks, I'd say hallelujah if God's in it. But if He ain't, we shouldn't be. Amen. Amen. They're powerless because their perception is physical. Listen. You spend time with God, you learn His voice. Amen. You meditate with God, you learn His voice. You ask Him, He'll tell you. He'll speak to you. Huh? Seek His face. Hmm? He'll let you know. Listen, I know my wife's walk. I can be two aisles away from her at the grocery store and know what aisle she's going up because I know how she walks. Uh, I, I, we spent 25 years ago. I spent 40 years with the Lord. There's some things to know about Him. Are you listening? But there's some people who don't have a clue because their perception's all physical. Hmm? You ever know somebody who's really full of... You know, just easily, they just believe everything. They're easy to get one over on. You know, you can say... Wow, sun's out and it's midnight. Really? You ever know people like that? Huh? Well, there's some people, they're the same way spiritually. They don't get it. They just don't get it because it's all physical. They don't understand the spiritual. Huh? And they're powerless. Powerless disciples. 
Their purpose is independent of the peace speaker. Their dependency isn't on Jesus. Their dependency is on all kinds of other things. There are some people that depend on their church family more than they depend on Christ. Hmm? I hear people, I, I try to listen. I don't always remember. I always don't listen well. But I try to listen. And there's a lot of people that brag on the church family don't brag on Jesus. I love you. I'm glad we're in the family and I'm glad we're going to, going to the house one day. But we're, we're in the family and we're going to the house because of Jesus. Right. He's the one that fitly frames us together. Are you listening? There are some people. Their dependence is on that pat on the back or that person being kind to them. That's why they're easily offended. Brother Brian didn't shake my hand. Who does he think he is? Huh? You say, does that really happen? There are people. I know a church. You don't believe me? I know a church that's split because over whether they put metal or plastic garbage cans in the bathrooms. I want to tell you something. That crowd's missed God a long time before we get to that point. The disciples were powerless to help this man, this man's son, because they didn't have faith. They had unbelief in their hearts. They hadn't prayed. They hadn't spent time with God. They hadn't fasted. They'd been going through the motions. They'd had a little bit of success. They'd overcome a little bit. They was happy being recognized. They was one of Jesus' entourage. And they start to get the big head. Now I said only Jesus could rebuke the devil. But they could have prayed and got a hold of God. And God could have set that captive free. Are you listening? Jesus didn't need to be there. Their prayer could have got the job done. Why did he say this one only goes out through much prayer and fasting? If they could have had no involvement and had no effect on it, he'd have said this one was too tough for you. He didn't say that. They could have made a difference if they'd been spiritual and had the power of God. Now listen, I'm no fool. There's a lot of these things in this world we can't change except through prayer and fasting. But there's nothing going on in this world that we can't make a difference in. Do you realize the next great event is the rapture? The translation of the saints? The catching away of the saints? And we can rejoice in that. Does anybody in here work with people, have family members, and know people that aren't ready to go? Amen. Anybody? All right, how much more motivation do you need? Amen. Do you realize if they've heard the gospel, when that trumpet sounds, there's no hope for them? The Lord will bring strong delusion on them to where they'll believe a lie and they'll take the mark of the beast and they'll be damned? So don't you think we better get some power in our lives? Don't you think we better get real? Don't you think there better be some revival in our lives? Because if not, how are we going to make a difference? I'm so tired of going week to week fretting and stressing over who's going to be texting me now that they're not coming to church and what excuse is this one going to have and what excuse is that one going to have and what about this and what about... How come we don't really just get on fire for God and make a difference? I don't mean to be crass and I don't mean to be cold, but Jesus is coming and He's coming soon. And if all we have is what's in here right now that gets on fire for God, that'll work. Amen. I'm not fiddling around with the rest of the crowd. Amen. They can either get on board or they can get gone. It really doesn't matter to me. There are people dying and going to hell. There are people who are not ready for the Lord to come. There are people who need to be reached. Uh, why do we have to keep uh, constantly babysitting, putting pacifier in people's mouths? Uh, hey, if they know the Lord, the Holy Ghost knows how to get them here. If not, uh, hey, let them go in the hog pen until they get good and miserable and then they'll crawl their way back. In the meantime, there are precious souls that deserve to hear the gospel and we need to have the power of God in our lives. There's a powerless tomb 
So we ought to have powerful disciples. But most disciples and most churches are powerless. Hmm? The other night it got cold. The power kicked off for a little while at the house. It's amazing how quiet your home gets with no power. It's amazing how much you depend on that. Hmm? We sleep with two fans in our room. It didn't take the power to be off long that I wasn't awake because it got real quiet. Hmm. Listen, how come we don't depend on God's power that way? See, the power's been shut off and we're far too quiet. We're not doing anything. The devil's not worried about us. We're sitting over here on the backside of a hill. Nobody cares. Where's the power? Isn't it time we start proving it out in our lives? Isn't it time we start taking this thing serious? Isn't it time we start seeking His face? Isn't it time we start praying and fasting? Why wait on me to call a fast? Why don't you get in on it? Huh? A lot of you made New Year's resolutions going to diet. Here's your excuse. Call yourself a fast. Huh? You want, you want, you want some help? There you go. And start seeking God's face. A true fast is not that you just choose not to eat. It's where you become so enthralled with God, you don't take time to eat. God help us to realize there are a lot of lunatics in this world that need Jesus. A lot of people casting themselves in the fire and in the water. They have family members concerned about them. And they're turning to the priest. They're turning to the cults. Because they don't see any power in us. God help us. They even got a movie coming out, the Book of Mormon. They're just glorifying the cults. And they'll gain members beyond members beyond members. Because people go see that and think, well, these are just normal people doing a good thing. Well, now what they really need to see is the fire. God sets His church on fire. People come around and just sit and watch it burn. Why did you come out tonight? Why are you here? What has God done in your heart and in your life? Can God trust you to get somebody to Him? Well, I hope so. Too many that don't have any power. Too many offering up excuses. Too many going through the motions. Too many. Just anemic in the faith. Reminded what they said in Jeremiah's day. We are but a few of many. At least there's still a few. Little's much when God's in it. God can take a few and confound the masses. How about it tonight? How's your fuel tank? Your spiritual fuel tank. Isn't it time we get serious about this thing? Isn't it time we start seeking His face? Isn't it time we let God be God in our hearts and our lives? I don't want to be a powerless disciple. I don't want to have an outward show without an inward glow. God help us to have the power of God in our lives that others can see God working in our lives and desire what we have. See, if you've got the power of God in your life, the easiest thing to do is just point upward. But if you don't have the power of God, you know what we do? We point to others. It's His fault. It's His fault. It's her fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. So one of them was mean to me. And Brother David, we will even point to God. It's God's fault. God didn't answer my prayer. The way I wanted him to. Uh, hello, he's God. Yes. He knows what's best. Sure. Uh, I thought we were supposed to seek his face regardless how he answered our prayers. Right. Mm. Oh, when you got the power of God, they just see God in you. And all you can do is say, give God the glory. Because it's all about him. How about it tonight? You got the power of God in your life? If not, how long are you going to wait? Isn't it about time? Time's a fleeting. Isn't it time we get serious about this thing?
Well, why don't we just seek his face and see what he does in our midst. Let's all stand, brother.